Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at the GameSir X3 telescopic controller for your Android device. GameSir has released some controllers in the past, but this one is definitely a bit different because they've added a Peltier cooler around the back. So basically, once you have your Android device situated in this phone and you add power to the cooler, it's going to cool your device down. And one neat thing about this is it's not just a fan blowing on the back of your device. This is utilizing a Peltier cooler, so you will need to add power to it. We'll talk more about that in a second. But let's go ahead and take a look at this unit. Now, as you can see, it does come with a carrying case. We also get some accessories. We've got a little bit of customization that we can do to this with the included parts that come with it. But as you can see, the controller itself is a bit bulky. It's a telescopic controller. It does connect to your device over USB Type-C, so you don't have to worry about latency. But on the rear here, as you can see, we've got that Peltier cooler. So it is a bit bulky, but this can definitely keep your device cool for extended gaming sessions, and it is proven technology. It's been out for years. Like I mentioned, this does come with a few accessories, so we can kind of customize the device, like a different D-pad, and we've also got some analog stick covers. And when it comes to the analog sticks, I actually really like these. They are full-size analog sticks, so it's not using Switch-style analogs in this unit. The ends do look a bit small, but once we put these caps on them, it does make them much larger. And obviously, we've got an extra D-pad here, which really reminds me of Resident Evil's Umbrella Corporation. And you know, if you're into this style D-pad, you can always swap it out pretty easily. So this controller does have a couple things going for it. We've got a USB Type-C connection, which will eliminate any kind of latency. And obviously, the big boy on the back, the cooler. So like I mentioned, this is known as a Peltier cooler or a thermoelectric cooler. You will have to add power to it in order for it to work. It extracts heat from one side, pushes it out of the other. So we've got a heat sink and a fan on this side. And of course, since it's kind of a gaming device, they had to add a little bit of RGB. The cable that comes included is very flexible. It's actually a really nice USB Type-C cable. I wouldn't do any quick charging with it, but to power the cooler here, it works out just fine. And already, this side's getting cold. And I'll give you a quick idea here. We're at 29 degrees Celsius. It's completely off. As soon as I plug this in, it's going to start to cool down. And right now I do have the fan blocked off, but I'll pick it up in a second. We're at 27, 26, get a little more airflow, and it just starts dropping. I've seen this go as low as 13 degrees Celsius by just leaving it out for a little while. But uh, if I wait a second, we'll see it start to cool even more. Now, obviously it's not gonna bring the temperature on your phone down to 13 degrees Celsius, but we're already at 18 now. So from 29 to 18 in a few seconds, this thing does work. If you're interested in learning more about these Peltier coolers or thermoelectric cooling, I will leave a link to a YouTube channel in the description called DroneBot Workshop. So he's got a full Peltier video, does a bunch of experiments, but these come in all shapes and sizes. If you do a search for, let's say, a phone cooler on Amazon right now, you're going to see a hundred of these pop up, anywhere from 15 bucks up to a hundred. And Razer even jumped on the bandwagon recently, releasing their own cooler. And they do have a magnetic mount, so you can actually clip it onto basically any phone. But these do work. They extract heat from one side, making that side cold. The other side expels the heat through a heat sink and a fan system. And the way GameSir set this up is actually pretty neat. As you can see, it's a telescopic controller, so it's got a spring-loaded system in the middle, and it can clear the camera hump on your device. So I've tested a bunch of devices in here, and I've actually been able to kind of position this on every single phone that I've tested it on. The USB Type-C connection here does have a little bit of flex to it. So right now I've got the Black Shark Pro, and if I try to put this in here, you know, right in the middle, it's not going to clear the camera hump. But we've got adjustment on both sides here, so it's really easy to kind of move this cooler down a little bit. And I make sure that it's making good contact to the rear of the phone. But yeah, it's now clearing that hump, and we're good to go. I've tested it on about six different devices, Motorola, Samsung, we've got the Xiaomi devices, and the Red Magic devices. All of them fit pretty well. When it comes to the analog sticks, I actually really like what they've done here. We've got this full-size analog sticks in here. They work out really well. I've tested a bunch of racing games, some cloud gaming, and emulation with them. So those are great. But one thing I'm not a huge fan of is the D-pad here. So we've got that swappable top, but it's using micro switches. Now we've been seeing this a lot with newer controllers coming to the market. Some people enjoy them, some people don't like them. It really comes down to personal preference, so if you're not into these micro switches, then this one might not be for you. 
because we've definitely got more micro switches here and no analog triggers. So these are either on or off. So we don't have any linear action at all with the triggers. And the face buttons, also using micro switches. Now I want to test the performance of the built-in cooler and I need to get my baseline. So I've got a thermal throttle test running here and I've also got a temperature gauge up top. This is the Black Shark 5 Pro. We've got the Snapdragon Gen 1. This chip can definitely get hot, but then again, we are using a gaming phone, which has pretty decent thermals. I mean, you can definitely thermal throttle this over a long period of time. But what I'm going to do here is just stress out the CPU for 10 minutes straight and see what happens. So it looks like around 9 minutes, 30 seconds, we got a little bit of throttling here and our temperature reached 55 degrees Celsius. As you can see from the graph, at 55 degrees Celsius, performance starts to drop off a little bit. Now, one thing I need you to keep in mind is we're only testing out CPU right now. So once you add the GPU into the equation, it can get hotter a lot quicker. Okay, so now that the phone's cooled down, we need to see how it performs with the phone cooler installed. We've got kind of a baseline here. At 55 degrees Celsius, it does start to thermal throttle a little bit, and that happens around 9 minutes and 30 seconds into it. Now, one thing I'd like to mention here is if I took this cooler, put it on, and left it for 10 minutes before I started the test, the ending temps would be much lower because it had time to kind of soak up the coolness from that Peltier cooler. But I just put it right on, plugged it in, and started the test, and we're going to see what happens. All right, coming up on 10 minutes here, and we've only hit 50 degrees Celsius. Like we saw without the cooler, we were at 55 degrees Celsius around this same time, and it started to thermal throttle a bit. So yeah, it is working, and like I mentioned, if I left this on here longer before I started the test, our temps would be cooler, but it's not going to up the performance, because, you know, as long as we can stay in that range there without hitting that thermal throttle limit, we're going to have the same performance across the board. Taking it down to, let's say, 40 degrees Celsius isn't going to give us any more performance. And the device itself does feel cooler to the touch. The device works great for games that natively support controllers from Google Play. Something like Minecraft, you don't have to do any kind of mapping or anything like that. It's just going to work right out of the box. Just plug it in, start the game up, and you'll have a great time with it. But keep in mind, there are some games on Google Play that don't support third-party controllers. One that comes to mind is Call of Duty Mobile that only works with official PlayStation or Xbox controllers, but luckily GameSir does have an app that you can download, or you could use a third-party mapping app, but the official GameSir app does allow you to update the firmware, and we can do full-screen mapping. So basically, what this is going to allow us to do is map physical controls, obviously on the controller, to on-screen touch points. So in theory, you could use this controller with any game. Another thing I always like to test on these controllers is the D-pad with fighting games, and I'm not a huge fan of this one. I've used micro switch based D-pads in the past that worked out a little better, but I really think it comes down to the way this is positioned. Now I mean, you could definitely get used to it, but this wouldn't be my first choice for a D-pad. Okay, to sum it up, I do like the fact that GameSir has packaged this cooler with the USB Type-C telescopic controller. When it comes to these USB Type-C controllers, I'm a huge fan. I love the fact that we have zero latency. But I do think they could have done a better job with the D-pad and especially the triggers. Just using those micro switches there can get a lot of people by. And unfortunately, we just don't have it here. The triggers are either on or off with those micro switches. Last thing, pricing. So on Amazon right now, the GameSir X3 is $99, which is a bit high when you compare it to other great USB Type-C controllers on the market right now, including the brand new GameSir X2 Pro, which is actually a really great controller with analog triggers. That one's coming in at $79, and personally, I would pick that one over the X3 all day long, but if there's some reason you really need cooling on a USB Type-C controller, then I guess the X3 could definitely be for you. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in the X3 or even the X2 Pro, I'll leave some links in the description. But like always, thanks for watching.